managing their feelings. The researchers took the DNA samples of the subjects they were feeling that were feeling gratitude, love, appreciation, as well as when they were feeling anger, frustration, or stress. You know it's going to happen, but it's so interesting that science will one day catch up with what we already know is spiritual truth. And so back to this. When the subjects felt anger, fear, frustration, or stress, their DNA tightened up and became shorter and switched off the DNA code. But when the subjects felt love and joy and gratitude and appreciation, the shutdown DNA codes were reversed and the DNA relaxed. It lengthened and it unwound. We have a direct effect. When they say that, my body, spirit, it is true. And I think most of us in this room do realize that. So our emotions affect our physicality, literally, literally. And that experiment was followed up by testing HIV positive patients. And this was in 93, so it was raging then. They discovered that feelings of love and gratitude and appreciation increased the body's resistance to the virus up to 300,000 times. 300,000 times, pretty impressive evidence. What if we used it in today when we're in the middle of this coronavirus that seems to be uh, all over the place, except for in this room. This room is clear. Oh, and God is in this room. And when you connect and align with that God self that is the truth of who you are, well, you are in that heightened state of gratitude, beyond gratitude. You are connecting with the truth of who you are, the, the absolute truth. And that's high vibration. So what should we be grateful for? We've talked about this many, many times because there's many things to be grateful for and, and grateful for. And Ernest Holmes says, give thanks in everything. So typically, we give thanks for the things we have, for our relationships, our health, for our spiritual community, for our jobs, for our stuff. And that is all wonderful. In the past, we have looked at being grateful in advance for relationships, health, jobs, all that stuff that we are looking to experience in our lives. And that is also wonderful. It's all good. We have looked at things about ourselves that we'd like to hide and found that there were aspects of who we are that we could be grateful for. And that's terrific. That's terrific. And we even looked at the stuff that felt yucky, well, for a better name, and we learn to be grateful for that part of us, like our shadow self. And we call for the blessing in it. And as you remember, of course, our beloved Emma Curtis Hopkins, this too is good, this too is God, this too is for me, and I demand to see a blessing in it. I would have loved to have heard that woman give a talk. <laughs> Man, she must have really just been laser in her her alignment and in her words. But that's not where we're going to focus today. We're going to go a little different. Our gratitude today, and you might say, if it's not okay to be grateful for things in my life, if I'm not going to be grateful for future things in my life, if I'm not going to be grateful for the spiritual gift, if I'm not going to be grateful for my shadow self, if I'm not going to be grateful for the challenges and learning opportunities in my life, well then what else is there? And there's nothing left. And I say, au contraire. Au contraire, my friends. Don't you love that word? Au contraire, my friends. Because we have 10 things to be really grateful for. The first one is oneness. I am grateful that there is a singular presence in this universe that runs in and through all things. I am grateful that this singular presence, this presence called, called God, mind, Holy Spirit, intelligence, 
Allah, love, Yahweh, energy, whatever you want to call it, this infinite energy that runs through all that there, that is, is the very essence of who I am, and it's the very essence of who each and every one is. It is the absolute truth of who we are. And it is as near as your breath and as close as your hands and feet. It's, it's always moving through us. It's always moving through us. And this presence is good. It is only good all of the time. It's always really good. The presence of our divine self is always good. Outside stuff doesn't always look so good. This human experience doesn't always match up. But as long as you focus on that indwelling spirit, you will, you will move through any challenge and you will benefit from it. You really will. Because that divine energy is our nature, the truth of who we are. And that moves us on to the divine creative process, which I love to talk about. The, that's why I love foundations class. I love the divine creative process that we're all a part of. So I am grateful that the one singular presence operates infallibly through a process called the law to create form. It creates form. God thinks and the thoughts are operated on by the law. The law is part of God. It's a substance. But it thinks, let there be light. And so there was light. It is done instantaneously in divine mind. And this process operates <clears throat> infallibly in me as well. And it works infallibly in each and every person here as well. And that which you think, feel, and believe is operated on by this law, this infinite divine law. And it's infallible. And it brings into your life great experiences when we focus on it. And that brings us to our fourth. Affirmative prayer. I'm so grateful I can align myself with the beauty, the peace, the harmony, the joy, the plenty of the universe and have this infallible law work to create those experiences in my life through prayer. Because that's what prayer does. That's why it's so important to have that purpose statement in the beginning part of affirmative prayer or spiritual mind treatment, as Holmes calls it, have that purpose because the law is working on it immediately, immediately. That brings us to free will slash choice. I am grateful that I, we, always, always, always stand a choice, always. Always, and we forget that sometimes. You hear people say, I didn't have any choice. Yes, you did. We always have choice. That we were made in the image and likeness of the divine and imbued with the ability to choose. At any moment, we can choose to experience freedom or bondage, love or hate. It's all on us. It will always be. And if we don't like the results of a choice, guess what? We can change our mind and make a new choice. How cool is that? We are powerful beings. We truly are. Brings us into reciprocity, one of my favorite words. Reciprocity. I'm grateful that the universe does respond to us according to what we think, feel, and believe. And what we are in the world, how we show up in the world, the world is to us. What we give out, we receive. It might not be in the same form, but it's going to come back. It's a reciprocal universe. These are spiritual truths that we really believe in. And that brings us to number seven, abundance. I am grateful, eternally grateful, that I live in a world of infinite abundance. And all I have to do is see that. It's all around us. It's through us. It truly is. It's an abundant universe. Just look at this fall we've had. I have been really grateful every single day to open up my door and get in my car or walk in nature, which I don't do too often. I go in my backyard and just see these glorious colors. How does that not raise up the spirits 
to a place of gratitude. And then we look at the stars and that fabulous moon that was just around on Friday. It was Friday. I mean, this is God in all his glory creating. Creating. The, the sand, grains of sand on the beach. They're mind-blowing, actually. Each one different, just like us. No one has the same fingerprints. That always blows my mind. And I say it a lot because God does not repeat itself. Every single human being is unique. No two have been created alike. That's pretty amazing and something to be grateful for. So this abundance is our, yours and my, inheritance. Be simply because of who we are. Simply because we are children of the divine. That moves us into forgiveness. I'm thankful for this incredible tool for aligning myself with the flow of life. Can't have the flow of life if you're holding resentment. It blocks the flow of life. So forgiveness is always, you must do that. It's a given if you wish to be in the flow of life. <sighs> and that eternal self that is within each one of us is just that, eternal. It's on an eternal journey. It doesn't die. It's on, these bodies die. It's on an eternal journey. And that brings us to the Christ consciousness. Finally this morning, I am so, so very grateful for the Jewish mystic who walked the earth over 2,000 years ago to show us the way, actually. The, I, I think one of the clearest new thought teachers to have ever lived, though there's been a lot of great ones, but he was very clear in teaching new thought. Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus the Christ, Jesus the Anointed One, the man who did not know where God stopped and he began, or where God started and he stopped. It was he was completely aligned, completely aligned. The man who said, this and more you can do. Do we believe that? He's teaching this to people. This is why he got killed. He's teaching people to be liberated and empowered. As soon as we realize this truth about who we really are, we can move into that Christ consciousness, which simply means anointed one, and we are all anointed by right of our being. So I just named 10 important things to be grateful for. And they are the 10 core concepts of our teachings. Our foundational teachings have 10 core concepts. And those were the, that's what we're grateful for today. The foundation of this beautiful, beautiful teaching. Oh, it's, it's just, we, we, we need to be grateful about this teaching because it, 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 it's so powerful and it guides us on this journey of life and we can't get stuck when we turn within and truly say, I of myself can do nothing. It's the Father within that doeth guide me. Call on the Holy Spirit. I love the Holy Spirit. Call on the Holy Spirit to move through you, to do the things that need to be done that you don't think you can do because you can't do it. And the Holy Spirit is just moving through you. I am grateful that we live in this spiritual system that enables me and each of you to develop the consciousness to, to attract us all in this room at this moment. Something attracted us in this room in this moment. Because together when we bless the world, the world is truly changed, and I really do believe that. It's changed in a universal way. We come together with this energy, and this energy is palpable and it's powerful. It's so important and it's the greatest way to live this life. By having the courage to live with this kind of integrity, and, and it really is, being in integrity intuitively for yourself that you are doing divine work through you and to live in that integrity to know that every person is a unique 
expression of God. So remember, remember, we have so much more to be grateful for than to be, to be grateful than to be sorry for. We really do. So yes, let's be grateful for the things in our lives. I, you know, I say this, I love stuff, I love things. Things are great. I love them, I'm grateful for them, but so much more. Future things in our lives, our spiritual gifts, we all have them. Our shadow selves, we all got one of those too. And even the challenges and the learning opportunities in our lives. And today, let's possess a grateful presence for the spiritual system in which we live and how it operates in and through our lives. Let us be grateful for the evolution of mankind and for our own personal evolution. Think about it. Where were you in consciousness a year ago? Do you think it expanded a little and a little more? If you're always looking for the lesson in life, it's expanded a lot. There's a lot of expansion going on. If we turn within and pay attention, it's time to be overwhelmingly grateful for this, this expanded consciousness and we learn to celebrate our own nature, who we really are. We're incredible. We are all such incredible beings. Let us know that an attitude of gratitude is an extremely high vibrational energy that not only does it feel good, but through the law of attraction, it brings more wonderful experiences into our lives. That's what it does. Let us give thanks, let us give thanks, not just one day out of the year, but every day out of the year, and possess that grateful presence. So I will close in saying, happy 11th anniversary to Joyful Gathering Spiritual Center, yes. <laughs> Strong. We got places to go and things to do. So we're not going anywhere, I can tell you that. And happy Thanksgiving the day to each and every one of us. Blessings, blessings of love to all. So it is.